It is all different types of individuals, all different types of individuals. We had, I, I remember apprehending a woman from Guatemala that walked four miles on top of a ridge carrying her six-year-old son, all the way up to somebody who tried to fight me from Macedonia. All we know is they cross the border legally, we're gonna go after them. We got a lot of criticisms, oh, you're stopping people who are coming here just to, make, to work, just to be with the family. We don't know that when they cross the border. The helicopter will stay in our area for I, whatever designated amount of hours. Could be two, could be four, I don't know. Then they'll go to another area. I had a young lady from Guatemala one time who, I, while I was processing her, I asked her, do you want to see an, do you want to see an immigration judge? Do you want to see an asylum officer? She said no. So later on in the process, I asked her, so what was your purpose for coming to the United States? She said, I wanted to be with my family. Okay, so we went through the process. Then I asked her, do you want to see an asylum judge? Do you want to see a, a, an immigration uh, judge? An asylum officer or an immigration judge? Then she said yes. And she said, because I'm, I'm in danger of, go I feel like I'm in danger of going back to my country. I've had people that say, oh, I just came here to be with my family. I just came here to work. Uh, it's so hard in my country. We run their fingerprints. Hey, guess what? They're arrested for murder or they're wanted for murder. We make a joke that one day Nogales is just going to fall because there's so many tunnels. Now, anytime we do see, uh, we do find a tunnel, of course, we will go in, we will, we will do our investigation. As an agent, I will crawl in that tunnel, but you have to be certified to be able to enter that, that tunnel. We, we have a very committed team that has, first and foremost, medical uh, treatment in mind. If the kids are suffering any kind of illness or, or injury along the way, um, that's paramount. Uh, once that is uh, established, that the kid is in good health, that the child's in good health, then we try to expedite their process. That means that when they come to our processing center, we try to get them in and get them out as quickly as possible. Um, an adult might be able to sit in a, in a detention center a little bit longer, but a child, you know, obviously doesn't want to be there if they don't know what's going on. So we try to minimize the impact on them by getting them in and getting them out as, as, as quickly as we possibly can. You like to see one? Entonces, nos gente de so right now that becomes a problem because the, the federal government doesn't cover the passage to those countries. So they have to stay here in Nogales, so they become a problem for Nogales. ¿Cuál sería, cuál, qué es lo que opino yo? La franja fronteriza entre Estados Unidos y México. The, the border between the United States and Mexico is the third largest in the world. Uh, instead of spending so much in security, they should do a program that helps on the infrastructure uh, of those border cities so they could come here and take advantage of, of those uh, maquilas places and uh, places like that to, to work and stay here and work instead of just crossing there. O programas que reciban a los migrantes y lo regresen generaron un proyecto de desarrollo económico en la franja fronteriza con inversiones de los dos países. What happens uh, when these people are coming across and using this this rough terrain and 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 taking all those risks is you're you're having people come from from extreme poverty from countries with extreme poverty. So they're looking at the United States as something that's going to be good for them and their family. So they take great risks and great challenges and they pay a lot of money to do it. Uh, sometimes they get assaulted by the same guides uh, that, that bring them over. Uh, they get ripped off by other people. Uh, they, been, they get taken to Tucson or Phoenix and they're, they're placed up there uh, and they're kidnapped and when they're kidnapped, they will call the family and tell them you need to give us $5,000, $10,000 in order to release them. We have, we have children that are being used to bring drugs over. We have seen a grandmother, 88 or 88 year old grandmother that was picked up as a pedestrian with, with drugs strapped around her body. Can you imagine that? I mean, you would think your grandmother, she wouldn't do that. <laughs> Here in the United States, uh, we frown very heavily on law enforcement officers uh, being corrupt, uh, we, we weed them out. We, we, we identify them if necessary because it hurts. It hurts our image, it hurts our job, and it hurts our functions. What happens if they get to the north, they get to the they don't want to be there. Detention center, not here. At our station, we do have a detention processing area. Our 